Good morning, Lone Star Cowboy Church. How nice to see you all today on this kind of dreary Sunday morning. But aren't you thankful that we get to worship at our own church and we get to worship how we please? If you're watching us on the internet this morning, good morning to you too. And we certainly hope that you receive a blessing from our music and from our sermon and from all the things we do on Sunday morning. And of course, all of you who are our regulars, you know how important you are to us. And we're delighted that you're here today. My little thought for today is this. When you get what you want, that's God's... Oh, excuse me. Let's do this again. When you get what you ask for, that's God's direction. When you don't get what you ask for, that's God's protection. Good one, right? Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we're so grateful that we have this opportunity to bow our heads and say thank you this morning for the beautiful rain that we've gotten over the last couple of days, for the privilege of being in your house on Sunday morning, and for the grace and the mercy that you've given us all this week. We ask your blessings upon everyone who's here today, Lord. We have a special request that all of those who are on our sick list, Lord, get special healing and, and that they get touched by the Master's hand this week. Guide and direct us as we start this busy Christmas season, Lord, and help us to constantly remember the true meaning and the joy that we share in the Christmas holidays. Be with everyone as they travel over these next few days. Give this band this wonderful music today and guide our pastor as he gives us words. For all these things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, get started on this busy week. Uh, first of all, Monday night, dinner's at 6.30, service is promptly at 7 o'clock. Tuesday is women's Bible study here at the church, and that's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Wednesday night, of course, is Bible study, not only for the children, but for the teens and for the grown-ups. And dinner's at 6 o'clock on Wednesday, and then service starts promptly at 6.30. Thursday night is uh, Responding Recovery, that's here at the church, and that's at 7 o'clock. Now, today, immediately after service, there's a 
new member class. If you are interested in finding out about our church, if you want to become a member, that will be in the pastor's office just instantly after our morning service. If you have a child that's in the Christmas program for Christmas Eve, there's a practice for those immediately after church today, and I think Candice has promised me it'll only take about 30 minutes or so. So don't forget that the children need to practice for the Christmas Eve service. Um, let's see, what all else? There's a whole lot of things in your bulletin this morning. Don't forget that the men's prayer breakfast is next Saturday morning. I understand Charles is the chef this week. Come and be a part of that. That's at 8 o'clock here at the church. Now, the youth group is going to Six Flags next Saturday, and they are going to be leaving here by 9.15. So if you have a kid that's going to the Six Flags Christmas in the Park, then they need to be here no later than 9.15 next Sunday morning. The 22nd, or sorry, Saturday morning, the 22nd is going to be Eaton Meeting. The church is going to provide the turkey and the ham for the eaten meat, and so we need to get together and do sides and desserts and bread. So put that on your calendar. That's not next Sunday, but it's the Sunday after. Now, in the bulletin are all of the activities for the holiday weeks. We'll have eaten meat on Sunday. There will be no Monday night service on the 23rd. Then the Christmas Eve service is here at the church at 6 o'clock, so put that on your calendar. But then there will be no services the remainder of the week, just back the following Sunday. And that's going to fall through for the New Year's week also. We'll have service on Sunday, but there'll be no Monday night nor no Wednesday night services the week of New Year's. Okay, open arena. And team sorting is this coming Friday night. Open arena is free for anybody who wants to come and ride. Team sorting is $40 per person. Starts at 7 o'clock, runs through 9.30. There will be no mounted shooting in the month of December, so if you had that on your schedule, we will not be doing that. And I think that's everything I need to tell you. Good morning. Um, so Christmas Eve service, we're going to want to do a cookie exchange. Um, so, you know, you bring your normal snacks for Christmas Eve service, but if you're wanting to do the cookie exchange with us, you can bring a dozen cookies. We'll have a little area, um, and then you can leave with a dozen other cookies or a mixture of, you know, other people's cookies. It's just kind of fun. Um, so if you're wanting to do that, you know, bring those with you Christmas Eve service, and we'll have a little area where we can do that, and we'll have um, containers for you so you don't have to bring your own container to bring some cookies home. Good morning. Good morning. I just uh, I want to take a quick second, and I want to thank the people of this church. Being a youth leader, it, it is amazing of the uh, prayers and help that the youth group gets. So I just want to thank y'all so much. Y'all are always a blessing, and I got a few more things about Six Flags, but Miss Audrey's voice is a little easier on the ears, so I'm going to let her do that. Okay, we're asking that everybody be here at 9.15, ready to go by 9.45. If you're at 9.46, you're not getting on the bus. Okay, I'm not, I'm not playing. 9.45, we're leaving. Um, eat a good breakfast. We're not feeding you breakfast. Lunch will be provided at 3 p.m. Um, thank you. A round of applause for Ms. Wanda for, for providing our lunch. The entire group will come out to fellowship and devotion, whether you're hungry or not. Jesus, Jesus doesn't care if you're hungry or not. Come on. <laughs> and be there on time, because I'm ready to get back to those rides, too. We will leave Six Flags no later than 8. Your teens will call you or text you 30 minutes before we get to the church. Any extra meals or snacks will be the teens' responsibility. Parents send, like, 80 bucks. Lone Star Cowboy Church is not responsible for anything you lose. So if you misplace your phone, your purse, your wallet, anything, it's on you. And a devotion that day will be done by Ms. Audrey. She don't know it, but she knows it now. <laughs> and FYI, Six Flags is cashless. They don't take cash. They only take cards for everything that they do.
Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the soap and the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul flames and blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Thomas, will your robes be white? You're as white as the blood of the Lamb. Will you soon be ready for the mansion's bride and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed? In the blood. In the blood. In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are you gone? Spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you washed? Are you washed? In the blood in the soul flames and blood of the Lamb. Are you garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Woo! All right, folks, we got a newbie up here, and we'd like to introduce him. His name is Mr. George Plymouth. Y'all give him a round of applause. I think he sounds pretty awesome. And we'd love to have you here. So thank you for being here. Well, I was sleeping. Lord, you were working on a mess I made like only I can do. When I start thinking, I'm so far from you. I wake up to hear you whisper, that's not true. Morning mercy, you call me worthy. Feel like the sun shining on my face. Live unto goodness, silent grace. I feel it working. Goodbye to the hurting. You woke me up, put me on my way. Hallelujah, it's a brand new day. Good morning, mercy. Yeah, I'm still learning to trust and follow. I won't worry what tomorrow's gonna bring. Cause you hold it all. There in your hand and Now I'm lifting mine up Cause it makes me want to sing Good morning, mercy You call me 
worthy Feels like the sun shining on my face Living good this side of grace I feel it working Goodbye to the hurting You woke me up, put me on my way Hallelujah, it's a brand new day Good morning, mercy Glory, hallelujah, it's a brand new day Starts all over when the daylight breaks Giving me a song that makes me sing Good morning Glory, hallelujah, it's a brand new day Starts all over when the daylight breaks Giving me a song that makes me sing Good morning Good morning, mercy You call me worthy Feels like the sun shining on my face Live us good this side of grace I feel it working Goodbye to the hurting You woke me up, put me on my way Hallelujah, it's a brand new day Good morning, mercy Good morning, mercy Good morning, mercy. Good morning. Today's devotional, I wanted to cover the topic of fear. Well, let's ask ourselves a question. What, what is fear? Fear is a feeling that a person can get while believing that something bad is bound to happen. Isaiah 41, verse 8 through 10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. To me, God is telling us to let go of all fear and standing up to your fears, fears while not having to be scared. Here are some things that help me overcome my fears whenever I'm scared that something bad might happen. Make sure that you're always praying to God. Praying to God is like asking one of your friends, asking them for help with something, or asking one of your, one of your parents for something. And always make sure to put your faith in God and know that in the end, God is, can do the impossible. For I'm the Lord thy God. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, at the burning bush, the burning bush. God spoke to Moses. Of Moses to holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses, to holy ground. For I'm the Lord thy God. Go yonder, Moses, and smite that rock, smite that rock, smite that rock. Go yonder, Moses, and smite that rock, for I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off. 
We are in week two of Advent. Last week, we lit the first candle in remembrance of the Old Testament prophets who told you the coming of this Messiah. The preparation candle is the second candle on the Advent wreath. <laughs> it serves as a reminder that everything is being done to welcome and embrace the Christ child. The theme for the second week of Advent reading is preparation. Isaiah 40, 3-5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And lighting the second candle, we are also reminded that the Savior was indeed born as God had promised. Jesus is the Messiah foretold by the prophets of old. And lighting the second candle, we do so in celebration of Jesus, the Christ child born in Bethlehem. Please follow along as I read Luke 2, 3 through 7. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Jesus also went up from Galilee, from the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were complete for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. May the Lord's peace be with us all. The Lord is our faith and our life. May his love shine in our hearts. Our hope is the coming of the Lord. Let us pray that we may experience fully the peace of Christ. Father in heaven, the day draws near when the birth of your son will make radiant the night of the waiting world. May his quiet coming fill us with true inner peace. Amen. 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 We're doing things a little bit different today. Um, Ainsley asked me a few weeks ago if, she, if I would baptize her. She's a little bit younger than we normally would, but by golly, she's been a part of our church since she was just brand new, wasn't she? And I know for a fact that this young lady loves Jesus with all your heart, don't you? Come here, baby. You're too cute to be there by yourself. <laughs> she loves Jesus with all of her heart, and, and you realize baptism and what you're doing is you're being a testimony. You're showing all of us that you love Jesus with all your heart. And do you love Jesus? You know he loves you? Yeah. Yeah. So it's my privilege to baptize you. Let's ask the elders if you guys would come forward at this time. She wanted to be baptized. She said, but she wanted to make sure she got to go to Sunday school. So we're going to do it a little early so she can get there. Okay, let's go up. Let's be baptized. Ainsley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the one who created a plan for your salvation so long ago, one who looks down upon you and says, that's my girl, I love her. And I baptize you in the name of Jesus, his son, the one who created your opportunity for salvation, the one who gave his life so that you could have life and love him and love God. And I baptize you in the Holy Spirit, that spirit inside your heart that helps you know when you need to be obedient to mom and when you need to listen and how to obey and live for Jesus. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we look forward to seeing what God does in Ainsley's life and all of our children, but she's special to us. God bless you, Ainsley, as you continue to be obedient to the Lord. Oh. 
Oh, what a joy. That is amazing. <laughs> Something so beautiful about a child and just wanting to know the Lord more. It's just awesome. Um, everyone stand with me. I gave y'all a break for a long time, so... Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and, heaven and nature sing. The Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the wonders of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives All fear is gone Because I know How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know And 
life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of hurry and I'll know he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know is worth the living just because he lives and life is worth the living just because he lives amen that's why we're here today it's because he lives we can celebrate that fact with me join with me let's just go to the lord in prayer one more time, please stand. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house where we can praise and worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the rain that we received over this last uh, few days. We just praise you for that. But God, even more than we pray for the rain to, to take care of our pastures and our animals, Lord, we just pray that the rain of the Lord's Spirit would pour down upon our lives. God, I pray that we would feel that cool, uh, cleansing power just consume our hearts and our minds, Father. Purify us from all unrighteousness, God. God, I pray that you would allow us, Lord, to be refreshed, God, each and every day in your presence and in the Word of God. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to be encouraged and inspired by the message that we read each and every day as we pick up our Bibles and see what you have for us. God, I want to thank you, Lord, for the transforming work that prayer does in our lives, God, and how we can come before you, as Mateo reminded us. God, we can come before you in prayer, and Lord, you'll minister to our hearts and take fear or anxiety or confusion away from our minds, but give us hope and peace and wisdom. God, we praise you for that. Lord, you're a good God, and it's our privilege, God, to worship you. Lord, so often the things of the world become very distracting to us. We get caught up in the things of the day. We find ourselves chasing after the wind, as, Psalm, or as, as Proverbs talks about. But Lord, I pray that we would be a people who chase after the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you would continue to reveal yourself to us more and more each and every day. And that our spirit, Lord, would grow in faith and in truth and in knowledge, God, of the God who loves us and the life that you have before us. God, I want to thank you for uh, this church and all those who work so hard to make the ministries of this church go on and be successful, Lord. And I pray that you would bless our people. Lord, bless them for the efforts and the time and the energies that they give to serve you in their own unique ministries. Lord, we ask that you'd be with the prayer requests that we have as a church. As Wanda reminded us, our prayer, we, uh, the list is extensive, God. There's needs that we have as a, as a church and as a community. And Lord, I just pray that you would look down upon our people with favor and that they would understand healing power. Father, as Mr. Plemons and I was talking this morning, and he was sharing about an encounter he had with, uh, with a homeless individual this, even this morning. And Lord, his kind of commitment to kind of walk with this person for a period of time. And Lord, I pray that he'd be able to just speak wisdom in this person. And God, that would be a, an opportunity for this young individual to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and, and understand that there's life outside of being on the road. God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, and I pray that you'd use the word today to motivate our hearts to go out and make a difference. God, it's in your name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to give this band an opportunity to come down off this stage. You all find somebody you don't know, shake a hand or two, and then children, you are dismissed. You guys go next door, have a great time, and once they're down, we'll continue with the service. Great job.
Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I think it's time to begin. If you want to begin to make your way to your seat, we are in the Christmas season, and so we will be talking over the next few weeks about uh, preparing uh, for the Christ child. It is good to see each and every one of you. I hope that you've had a good week and looking forward to a Christmas season. It's a good looking crowd. We had a great time last Sunday afternoon. We had our ATV um, uh, race out there in the pasture. We had a ball. We had probably eight four-wheelers out there and quite a few people come out and, and raced. And uh, we just had a great time. Thanks for those who came and was a part of that. And, and uh, we always have a great time with that. Um, but there's a lot going on coming up in the next few weeks. So be very close to your, uh, to your uh, bulletin and, uh, and be a part of some of the other activities outside of regular Sunday service. We'll, this place is open every all the time. It's, it's always open. If you want to do something, just come over here. There's something going on here. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, if, um, if you want to come out Tuesday evening, um, we're the Agape School, the Agape Christian School is going to be here, and they're going to be doing a performance here on the stage. And uh, I don't know what time it starts, so any of the Agape kids know what time it starts? I, I just, I don't know. Um, but, huh? Yeah, let me know, and I'll put it on Facebook. So if you want to come and support one of our local uh, schools, one of our Christian schools, come and, and share with them and celebrate uh, Christmas with them. But that'll be taking place Tuesday. We're going to be in the book of Mark today. We're actually going to be in Mark chapter 1 this morning. And, uh, and so as you find that, we're going to be uh, talking about John the Baptist. Now, many of you are going to be heading off to Vegas uh, this week. Uh, some are going to Wichita to a... PBR event up there. Y'all be safe as you travel. Enjoy yourselves. Have a good time. Uh, don't leave Jesus here in Texas. Take him with you. 
Be an example of Jesus while you're there. And uh, be a testimony to somebody. When I was in, when I was in Vegas, um, I got to share, uh, got to just share testimony with uh, my, um, our uh, cab driver. And he became a friend uh, for a few years. We would keep in correspondence with one another through Facebook. And, uh, and any, whenever, uh, uh, anyway, I just I kept up with him for some time. And he'd contact me. So go make a Christian. Go, go be an example of Jesus there. Have a good time. Watch the event. Uh, come back with something overly expensive. And, um, but share Jesus while you're there with that community. Always, uh, we can go on. Mark chapter 1 says this, in the beginning, Mark, Mark, when you're reading Mark, Mark reads kind of like a comic book. Pow, bang, it's quick action. It, it goes from one amazing thing to the next. And, and he, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time on any particular thing. It's just like he goes from one miracle to the next miracle or one truth to the next truth. Really, really quick. Mark doesn't start with the, uh, with the baby in the, in the stable. Uh, he starts with John. He says this, in the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it was written in Isaiah the prophet. The beginning of the good news. Mark starts right off with the good news. What is the good news? What is the good news? We're, we're supposed to be good news people. We, we celebrate the fact that there's good news. But what is that good news? As I was thinking about that and I thought about Mark's, uh, people who Mark was writing about, I, I had to jot the words down that the good news for them at that moment was also that the Lord was once again speaking to the Israelite people. Do you realize from uh, Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, to the first book of the New Testament, there was 400 years of silence. So there's 400 years of gap where the Lord wasn't communicating through them to them. They were doing their sacrifice, or they were doing their, you know, their, they were following the prophets. They were following what the Pharisees said. They were uh, trying to navigate being a Christian without the Holy Spirit by obeying the laws. But there was a 400 year gap where uh, where the Lord was not speaking to the Israelite people. So the, the first of the good news was the Lord was once again speaking to the Israelites. Man, don't you love it when the Lord speaks to you? Don't you love it when the Lord truly, you just know without a shadow of a doubt, the Lord spoke to you in this particular situation. There's no question. There's no question that the Lord reached out and spoke to you. I remember uh, one particular time in my life, and many of you have heard it, but we've been together for 14 years, man. I can only come up with so many stories. But, but my dad had an auto shop in Kansas, and uh, uh, it was time to sell. He, he was getting older. He's having a hard time seeing stuff, and, and it was just time to sell. Everything was getting heavy. And, uh, and so uh, he had a young man who had worked for him, and uh, he wanted to buy it, a young man named Caleb Shroud. And Caleb wanted to buy it, and Dad made it a deal where he could purchase it. And so the, the, uh, he had to have an inspection. Well, this shop was a, uh, it was a nice shop, but, I mean, this place had been around since Jesus was on the earth. You know, the mold uh, lifts and everything. And so uh, Dad was, um, uh, he was, this guy comes, and he expects it. And Dad says, uh, how did it look? And he said, yeah, everything looks good. But whenever he got the report, this inspector suggested to the bank that they cut the concrete and make sure that those lifts have not been leaking hydraulic fluid. Well, some of those, uh, two, or th two or three of those lifts were probably 40 years old. Most certainly they've probably been leaking <laughs> hydraulic fluid. That scared dad. It scared him. And, and, by this, and, and he told me, he said, Charky, if they make me cut the concrete, I won't do it. And, and, and you can probably understand why he didn't want to do that. And so uh, it, it, it put him in some pretty heavy fear at the moment. And so I began to pray and I said, God, please, please, please walk with my dad because he was really struggling with just anxiety and everything at this moment. And the Lord spoke to me and I promise you, I will not tell you, I, I promise you the Lord spoke to me at this moment. He said, Charky, just trust they are not cutting the concrete. He spoke to me, not audible, but it was, it was in my spirit. They're not cutting that concrete. I was at the library one day, and that ain't a place I'd normally be, but at this particular moment I was, and mom calls me, and so I go upstairs so I can hear, and she said, uh, 
the, the, the bank said they ain't going to waste their time. They're going to continue to move forward at the process. Man, praise the Lord. But God spoke to me at that moment. Don't you love it when the Lord speaks to you? There's no question. There's no shadow of a doubt that the Lord has revealed himself to you. Church, think about your own particular salvation. Whenever you realized you needed Jesus in your life, you realized that, that you were living this life apart from God, never had any concern about God. But then one day the Lord knocked on your heart's door and began to whisper in your ear, I love you. I have a plan for your life. It wasn't an audible, I love you. But it was a, in your spirit, you just knew. And the Lord spoke to you. And you graciously received that salvation that the Lord had given you. What's the good news? Well, to the Israelites, first of all, that the Lord was speaking to them once again. Secondly, salvation that I just touched on. Salvation. Salvation for you and for me. Aren't you glad? Isn't that good news that we can have salvation? Isn't it good news that God doesn't look at you and sees you with all your faults and failures and says, Loser. But rather, God looks at you with all your faults and fa failures and says, you're my child, and I want, I want, to, I want to help you. I want, I want to mature you. I want to help you uh, walk with favor with me. I want to purify you. I want to give you a hope and a future. I want to give you salvation. Salvation. Don't you thank the Lord for salvation? Don't you thank the Lord for assurance? Assurance of that salvation. You can not only have salvation, but you can have assurance that God is walking with you as you go through this life. You can have assurance that someday when you, as old Mr. Mishler used to always ask me, Charky, aren't you afraid God's going to punch your time clock? Well, when God finally punches our time clock and we go to heaven, aren't you glad that you can have assurance that whenever you step out of this life, you'll step into God's kingdom and he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. I think he's going to tell me, well done, you idiot, you lucky sucker. Get in here quick before I change my mind. No, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Now come spend eternity with me. And as you walk in, he whacks you on the rear end because he's just that kind of guy. Pow. So proud of you. Good job. You made it. Assurance. Assurance of your salvation. Church, you can, you can watch on YouTube these videos where somebody sticks a, camera, a, a microphone in somebody's face and says, Do you know you're going to heaven? Well, I, no, I, I'm a good person. Uh, they don't know. But aren't you glad? Y'all, Aren't you glad that you have the good news? And the good news is your salvation. The good news is that the Lord is speaking to you. And the good news is there is assurance in that salvation. Guys, as we walk through this life, that assurance is revealed because the Lord continues to speak to us. He continues to talk to us. He continues to reveal his plan. And we can sing that old hymn with gladness. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. That's all I remember. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm trying to hum it. What is the rest? It doesn't matter. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. Church, whenever you find Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's a blessed assurance as you walk with him. You don't have to be in fear. You don't have to worry. You don't have to wonder. And somebody say, are you going to make it to heaven someday? You can say yes. And they say, how do you know? You can say, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Okay. Uh, love and endurance. Another reason it's good news. It's love and, and, and the love that endures to the end. Church, whenever you find Jesus, you find love. Christ is love. And you find a love that is enduring to the end. Does that mean life is always easy? Heck no. Life is not always easy, but there is an enduring love that you receive. Why do you receive it? Because you're walking with God. You're walking with the one who is true love. And there's eternal life. What is the good news? It's the Lord speaking to us. It's salvation. It's that assurance. It's his enduring love. And it's his internal life that he gives us. I can't imagine. It's been. Uh, I can't imagine living through this life with fear of the unknown. I can't imagine living with what's going to happen after death. I have no fear of death. Okay, bring it on. Anytime the Lord's done with me, punch my time clock. Bring it on. I'm not afraid of death. I know that, that my desire is to walk with the Lord. My desire is to follow him. And there will be a day that I will no longer deal with the burdens of this life, but I will walk in the presence of the Lord and, and, in his heavenly home. 
There is no fear of death. Church, that is the good news. And that's what those outside these doors need to hear. They need to understand this assurance. They need to understand this salvation. They need to understand God loves them and his desire is for them to have eternal life. Our scripture starts in the beginning of the the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it was written in Isaiah, the prophet. It goes on to says this, uh, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching and baptizing repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by John in the Jordan River. The Old Testament, in this passage, uh, Mark goes back and he speaks about some Old Testament writings. Uh, there's Malachi in there. There's Isaiah in there. There's uh, Exodus. The Old Testament uh, tells us a few things, okay? If you're, if you're wanting to do a study, you, you could go back to the Old Testament and it would tell you about creation. Talk about creation of the world. It also tell you about the cre uh, creation of mankind. It tell you about the early man. What was early man actually like? It tell you about the creation of, of Israel, the nation of Israel, and how God and the history of Israel. Uh, it'll tell you about that, but it'll also tell you about this coming. Uh, it'll tell you. Uh, uh, it'll tell you, tell you end times prophecy, like in Daniel. But it also tells you about an individual, a Messiah, okay? When you're in the Old Testament, you will see uh, uh, upwards of uh, uh, at least a few hundred scripture that point to a Messiah, a one who is going to come, okay? There's, a, there's over a hundred, like some say 191, as others say upwards of three or four hundred. So let's just say there's a few hundred scripture that points to a Messiah that's going to come at some point. Church, that's what we're seeing here is the beginning of this Messiah. That's why he brings up those passages in Exodus and Malachi and Isaiah. These were Old Testament scriptures fulfilling that there was one who was going to come before Jesus. It wasn't uncommon for uh, people of that day. In fact, to this day, if the president is going to go to a city, there's somebody who goes there before him to what? Prepare the way. Uh, kings at that time, they didn't just show up in a city and uh, surprise everybody. There was somebody who was there that would go a week ahead of time or however, what the case may be, and prepare so that whenever the king comes, uh, it was ready for the king to come. And so this scriptures talk about this one who would come uh, to prepare the way before the Messiah. They knew that when this one came to prepare the way, the Messiah was coming. As I was said, as I said, there was 400 years of silence. God hadn't spoken to the Jewish people for 400 years through the prophets. But then this man comes walking out of the desert. This wild man who wore camel's hair and ate locusts. He preached a message of repent and turn from your sins. Think about this. John wasn't an educated man. You see, they got their wisdom from these, prof, or from these uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, these religious teachers. That's where they seen the gospel. That's where they seen uh, information about God come from, was from these highly educated individuals, Pharisees and Sadducees and teachers of the law. But here, this man comes out of the desert. He's wearing camel's, uh, camel's hair and he's eating locusts. He's a wild man. Um, and he preached a message. And that message was repent and turn from your sins. He wasn't educated. He wasn't a Pharisee. He wasn't even well put together. He looked like you when you woke up with bedhead. He was a little bit wild, but he preached the word that the people were craving. And that word was repent. It's common today, church, to have fear about witnessing. As I, uh, as I think about this and, and uh, something that I've seen, uh, it, it, it coined this thought. It's, it's, un it's common today to fear witnessing. See, he was witnessing about something that was going to come. He was sharing about something that was coming uh, behind him, okay? He was, for he was, he was uh, 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 forecasting what was coming. 
But we, you see, it already all took place. We witness. We don't forecast about what's to come. We witness about what's taken place. But it's difficult. So many of us struggle. So many struggle with witnessing, sharing their faith. They say, and they think things like, I'm not smart enough to share my faith. I'm not smart enough. God couldn't use me. I don't know the scriptures well enough. Remember, this is a wild-eyed man with crazy hair that's eaten locusts, but he went out and made a difference in the world. But we think to ourselves, there's no way God could use me. I'm not smart enough. I don't know the scriptures. But y'all always remember this and don't forget it. Burn this in your brain. God has called you to witness. He did not call you to be a lawyer. God called you to witness he didn't call you to be a lawyer. When he was ascending up into heaven and he was saying his last words, he didn't say, now go into Jerusalem and Judea and to the ends of the earth and be a lawyer for me. No, he said, go out throughout Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and share the gospel about me and witness. A witness is somebody who tells what they have seen and what they have heard. A witness is someone who tells what they've seen and what they've heard. People will say, I can't witness. Someone may ask, them, may ask me a question that I can't answer. I can't witness. I'm afraid they may ask me a question I can't answer. But do you want to know the answer to that question? Anytime you're sharing your faith, God leads it on your heart to share your faith with an individual. Rather than becoming hyper fearful that you're going to ask you a question you can't answer, just simply begin to communicate with them. And when they ask you that question you can't answer, you know that there is a one answer that, that takes care of all the, the issues? One answer that you can always give? What would that answer be? They ask you the question you can't answer. The answer is, I don't know. I don't know. That's a legitimate answer. I don't know the answer, but I'll tell you what I've seen. A lawyer argues a case. A witness tells what they've seen and heard. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to witness. You just tell them what Jesus has done in your life. There's nothing worse than somebody who's fake. They don't want you to try to prove to them that you're a Bible scholar. They just want to know what has Jesus done in your life. And if he did that in your life, could he do it in me? Just tell them what you've heard. Tell them what you've t seen. Tell them your experience. Don't think to be an effective witness, you have to argue any case. You just simply express what you've experienced. The people were drawn to this individual. They were drawn to, uh, to John. Uh, the, the Lord had, uh, they were drawn to him. They, they came out to see him. Even though he was unkept in a little while, they, they were coming out through, uh, from, from the areas to come hear him speak. And as I was thinking about that, I began to ask myself, why were they coming out to hear him? What, why were they so in tune and, and wanting to hear this message? And as I thought about that, it, it came to me that the Lord had begun to prepare their hearts. They, the Lord had already started the work by preparing their hearts for the message that he was giving. And that message was repentance. The Lord was already on the move. Church. The blessings of the Lord, as whenever you, whenever, uh, what, what's God, let me, let me just, let me say it this way. What's God doing in your life at this moment? What's God doing in your life at this moment? How has he been preparing you? You see, John comes out of the wilderness and the people are drawn to him because the Lord's already moving in his, their spirits. But church, there's a reason you're here today. There's a reason you came into this church while there's a little bit of rain on your windshields. There's a reason you came in, maybe for the first time in your life. Maybe it's been a while. Whatever the case may be, you came here today for a specific moment. Why is that? Is it just because out of pure luck? Was it out of pure chance? Or is it because God's doing a work in your life? He's preparing you. And he's brought you here at this moment for a specific purpose. What is he Put in your life to turn you into a direction that he wants you to go. 
There, in, in, when, you're, when you're riding a horse, you, you're riding that horse. If you want him to, to go, uh, to go uh, left, you, you bump his nose to the left. You turn his nose the direction you want him to go. And he goes the direction you want him to go. Understand, the Lord is up there in heaven bumping you. He has a plan for you, bumping your nose the direction that he'd want you to go. Maybe that's why you're here today, because you needed to hear a song that was sang that maybe encouraged your spirit. Maybe you're here today because you need to hear the word that spoke today. Maybe you're here today because it's is starting a trajectory in your life of being a person who is a dynamic, sold-out follower of Jesus Christ. But it has to start somewhere. Are you here just by chance and by, by happenstance? Or are you here because God is preparing your way, just as John came out and began to prepare the way for these people? Did he motivate you today? Is he preparing you for something special? What's he preparing you for? What's today's message? This message is, all of you are going to get something different out of this message. What is it that God wants you to get out of this message? What is it? What, is, what do you need to hear in this message today to prepare you for this next week? I find it interesting. People will tell me, man, that, that really spoke to me. And they'll tell me what it was that spoke to them. And I'm thinking, I never said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. But it wasn't, it wasn't what I was saying. It was what God was speaking to them. They used something in the message to, to point their nose and begin to communicate with them. John comes out of the desert speaking repent. Let's go to verse 6. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. In the scripture, God is frequently... This comes from a, a gentleman named Oswald Sanders. I thought this was good. Listen to what he said one time. In the scriptures, God is frequently represented as searching for a man of a certain type. Not men, but a man. Not a group, but an individual. When God does discover a man who confirms to him his spiritual requirements, who is willing to pay the full price of discipleship, he uses him to no limit, despite the man's patient shortcomings. This guy was a little wild. He was a little unwooly. He was a little unkept. His outward appearance was disheveled, but his heart was committed. And because of his committed heart, God was able to use him to prepare the way of the Lord. Church, the Messiah has already come. Jesus has already come. God don't need you to prepare the way of the Lord for a, for a, uh, for a nation. But he needs you to prepare the way of the Lord for your children. He needs you to prepare the way of the Lord for your grandchildren. He needs you to prepare the way of the Lord for those little kids that's next door. He needs you to prepare the way of the Lord. You, say, you may say, I don't fit the bill. Well, neither did John. He was unkept and unwooly, but he was, had a willing heart. And church, there's times in our lives where we have got to simply come before the Lord with true repentance and a true passion for the Lord and say, God, I don't know what you, how you could use me, but God, I'm here. God, change the trajectory of my life. Help me, Lord, not to focus everything, all my time and energy on myself and my circumstance. God, help me to be outward focused. Help me, Lord, to see this individual and say, how can I make a difference in this person's life today? Uh, Mr. Plemons and I was, was just talking, and, 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 and he had an encounter today with an individual. And it could have been easy, easy to got his coffee and drove off, but the Lord spoke to his spirit. He said, I need you to kind of be outward thinking at this moment. And there's no way, there's no telling what that trajectory is going to create now because somebody just stopped and took the time to love an individual who probably hasn't felt loved in some time. Lord, help me to not be so focused internally on myself. God, if you can use me, Lord, would you just simply bump my nose the direction you'd have me go? Just bump it and I'll walk. I'll walk in obedience. And Lord, I'm, I'm a little unkept. I'm a little unwooly. But Lord, if you can use me, God, my heart is, is right. And I am willing to be used by you. Verse 7. And this was his message. 
This is what John's message was. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This was all new information. This was new words to these people. Baptizing in the Holy Spirit, what did that mean? They didn't even understand the Holy Spirit. They hadn't received the Holy Spirit at that time. John understood his part of the process. He knew that it was he that he was the herald, but the one who was to come was the true hero. He was not the Messiah. He was the one who was here to proclaim the Messiah. Church, we are not the Messiahs. We are the ones here to proclaim the Messiah. Because of John's message, people's hearts and minds were prepared for Jesus. The one who was just over the hill, but the one who was coming soon. Church, he wasn't there yet. Jesus wasn't there yet, but he was coming. He was just on the other side of the hill at the moment. He, was, he wasn't there yet, but John was saying that he's coming. Prepare your hearts. Church, we celebrate the life of Jesus. We read about his life and his teachings in the word of God. We celebrate the first coming of Jesus, but we look forward to the second coming. Church, he hasn't came yet. He hasn't come back for that for his church yet. He's, he's still coming. It's just over the hill. It's just down the road. We don't know what it is, but, but we're going to forecast. The Lord is coming. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your minds. Walk in the presence of the Lord and allow his love to transform your heart. Allow the Lord to transform your life. He's coming, though. It's just over the hill. The signs are evident that the Lord's message is true. The Lord is, is, is soon to return. And I don't know if that's tomorrow or if that's in a thousand years. It could be okay here pretty quick because I don't know what I'm having for dinner. Let's go ahead and go on up. We don't know if it's today or if it's tomorrow or it's a thousand years. I don't know, but we can forecast the Lord is coming again to take his church. John was saying he's not here yet, but I'm baptizing you in something that I am foreseeing. In church, we can with confidence say, you know what? The Lord has not returned yet, but he has come once and he has prepared my heart and he's transformed my life. And I know that fully well. I know I'm not the person I used to be. And I know I wouldn't go back to save my life. I'm going to follow Jesus. And I, don't, and I don't care what the world says. I don't care what's popular. I'm going to walk in the presence of the Lord because I know that's where joy is. Church, how many people out there do you know that are walking outside of the presence of the Lord and do they have a life of joy? Is peace a part of their life? The answer is no, because they're wandering in dark places. They're trying to find joy and peace in the things of the world. And although these things sometimes bring short-term joy and excitement, they don't bring long-term love. Church, we point people not to a quick moment of excitement, not into an emotional experience. We point people into a lifetime, a lifetime of change and transformation, a lifetime of getting to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. My question to you today is where are you in that story? Are you one that came to hear the message of repent, to change, to, to repent of your sins? See that that sin causes, causes separation between us and God. Rob and I had a wonderful conversation the other day when we were talking about um, how is, how is uh, uh, stealing, stealing uh, somebody's bubble gum, uh, how is that sin and yet murder sin and all, both of them cause separation between us and God? What's well, a great question? But church, the answer, and, and, and as we talked, I said, just imagine, just imagine with me, church, that we had uh, absolute purified water right here, okay, it was sitting on that table, absolutely purified. No, no, no impurifications in that whatsoever. That, that water would be a great example of the holiness of God, pure. But if I just take the tiniest drop of an imperfection, just the tiniest drop, and I dropped it in that water, would it be purified anymore? No. See, that's sin. I may never have killed anybody, but I have sinned. Sometimes my drops were pretty significant. Sometimes my drops were pretty insignificant. But the truth is, I have sinned. 
and you have sinned. And the Lord, God, a God of pure, a purity, of all holiness, cannot have relationship. He cannot be polluted by impurifications. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And his death and resurrection created the opportunity for his blood to just imagine his blood just cover you. Now your sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. And we can have that direct relationship with God, not because of our perfection, not because of our goodness, but because of the blood that's been, that we have received in our life. And the Lord doesn't look at us as, as that person who's covered in sin any longer. He sees us through the blood of Jesus. Church, my question to you today, who here needs to be purified by the blood of Jesus? Who here needs to say, God, I want assurance in my life. I want salvation. I want to know that I know that whenever I go from this earth, I'll be in heaven with you. Who here today wants to walk in the presence of the Lord and not, not find themselves wandering in dark places? Who here today needs the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct your life? You don't come to the Lord after you know everything about the gospel. You come to the Lord whenever you hear the Lord knock on your heart's door. Begin to whisper in your ear and say, you know what, I love you. And this message is for you today. Maybe you're one who need to hear the message of salvation. You may be here today and you needed to be reminded of our responsibility to go and witness. Go make a difference in this world. Be the one who points, uh, points people, or, or the, the precursor to the one who's to come. Make straight the way for your children by the life you live. Make straight the way for your grandchildren by the life you live. Be an example of Jesus. Be the one who leads your children to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, God, that you look at us with favor and love and you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. And God, we praise you for that. And Lord, if there's one here today who would be honest and say, you know what, I've never even really considered God before, but but I hear the message. And, and if Father, if there's one here that you're just knocking on their heart's door, you're speaking to them, Lord, you're... you're you're communicating with them. There's, there's no question, God, that, that they feel you just pounding on their heart at this moment saying, I, I want relationship with you. I, I want to forgive you of, of your sin. And Lord, I pray that you just give them a boldness even now just to say, Dear Heavenly Father, God, I know I'm a sinner. I don't need a preacher to tell me that. I know it. God, would you forgive me? Would you purify me? Would you be the Lord of my life? I, I accept you. I accept what Jesus did on the cross for me. And Lord, I want God's blood. I want Jesus' blood to consume me. I want the assurance the pastor talked about. I want the salvation pastor talked to me about. I want the love that pastor talked to me about. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we as believers have to prepare the way for our children and our grandchildren, God. And I pray that we would do that with perfection. God, I pray that we wouldn't see the sin of our lives, God, as just our own little pet sins. But, God, I pray that we would see how those things kill our testimony. How they make the way uh, of the Lord more difficult because our children may not see us live in the life that we talk about. Help us, Lord, to live that purified life. Help us, God, to be the ones who prepare the way for our children and grandchildren. And Lord, I pray that we would be a people who understand and see the benefits of walking with Christ. God, we love you. Lord, we pray that today is a day of salvation. We pray that a day is a day of a heart transformation. And I pray for all of us. It's a reminder to go out and be an example of Jesus to a very dark world. God, for what you do, we praise you. And it's in the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. God bless each of you. Go on the victory of the Lord.
open mic. Oh, okay. Uh, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, is the uh, Agape program here. So come be a part of that. We're going to have a membership class in my office here in about, I don't know, 45 seconds.